Hey, do you know what I've just been thinking about? You know, we've got, it, it, I, I come home and I've got these glossy election campaign things in in my mailbox because they're all running the midterms and then there's local elections. I won't vote for any of the local. Uh, oh, I won't vote for any of the local politicians because they're, they're promising this, they're promising that, and they can't deliver on any of it. <clears throat> But you know, there's a, nationally there's a big, uh, there's a lot of concern because there's the uh, a good possibility the Republicans will now, which is the right-wing semi-fascist element, uh, that they will make major gains. They could end up controlling the Senate and the House of the Representatives. But I mean, it's uh, the big problem. I'm really. I looked at an article. This was yesterday. You know, Bernie Sanders, I wish he'd just go away, to be honest with you. He says there's not been much, uh, not been enough of a contrast between the reactionary Rep Republicans' position on the economy and what Democrats have done, can do, and should do, he says. And what he's saying, and what this article is saying, is, you know, there was a period there with the, uh, uh, the, the Supreme Court decision on abortion uh, where the Democrats looked like that was the Republicans had stabbed themselves in the in the throat or whatever that expression is but in the last analysis what matters is whether you can eat and whether you can feed the children you have now economics will always trump the abortion and other social issues guns and everything if you can't pay the rent if you can't feed your kids and and uh, the Republicans, of course, have a terrible, like Sunak in England, uh, at Britain, has a terrible, um, have a terrible position. Yeah, they're worse than the Democrats. The Democrats are not much better. There's, uh, on the Democrats, you die on Thursday instead of on Tuesday, you know. But they are, there are some major differences on social issues. But in the last analysis, I think it was Clinton or something that said, you know. Um, the, 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 it's the economy, stupid. And um, and so I'm just reading it and I'm thinking just how, what gets me, all of these articles about the political situation never addresses the fact that I only know the statistic for 2016 where about 95 million didn't vote. But for, for years and years and years, the, in, as far as the electoral um, uh, uh, sphere is concerned the American people have just abandoned it you know the trade union leaders who are the agents in many ways of the Democratic Party within our trade unions uh, um, try to push us still pushing uh, 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 work at their members vote for a party that people abandoned long ago and and so there's this whole uh, um, block this hundred million people you never read any article in there in, uh, when you, they're talking about uh, issues. How do we get that element? Because the Democratic and Republican parties, both big capitalist parties, remember the Democratic Party is the only party in the history of humanity that has dropped nuclear weapons on urban centers. Okay, so I mean, these are the two parties you're dealing with. These two parties. They're not interested in that hundred million. They have nothing to offer. They don't. They have nothing to offer the people that vote, but they certainly have nothing to offer that hundred million or so that have just opted out because they've drawn the conclusion that on the main thing, on the base, on most things, on the important things, it won't matter, and they're right about that. And the the, the article I'm reading here from yesterday's Wall Street Journal, it, it it's just it's, it hits the nail on the head. Uh, um, it, uh, there was a recent New York Times uh, poll found that 26% identified the economy, as, which means bread and butter issues, wasn't pronouns, wasn't whether somebody's binary, non-binary, multi-sex, whatever the sexes there are, none of that. 26% identified the economy as the most important problem followed by inflation at 19%, 19% uh, uh, of the population, which is, in the inflation is also an economic issue, right? You go out and you, I mean, it's insane, the, the cost of things. The state of democracy registered at 7%, and abortion was identified, but 4% of the population were worried about that. The economics will always trump abortion. 
And I remember that not so long ago, well, a few years ago, there was a poll, I think it was in Brazil or one of those countries, where they talk, that, that was asked about, would you prefer, would you accept a dictatorship uh, uh, if, you, if you could get the basic necessities? And people said, yes. You know, and I remember when I first came to this country and uh, workers would say to me, uh, uh, well, you know, Cuba, they, Cuba's undemocratic, they can't vote and this, that, the other is. Uh, well, I, I understand that, but you know, when, when um, voting, when, you, when it comes to whether you can eat or whether you can have shelter, voting is secondary. Whoever provides that will get the vote. And, and the thing is, is that the problem in this country in the U.S., is there's no, there's no, there's no third alter, there's no alternative. There's no third party. There's no social democratic party. There's none of that. So what's happening is we're seeing the end of 150 years of two capitalist parties that have dominated political life here. It's over. It's over. Trump. A lot of the Trump supporters were people that was it was just thumb up your nose at them. It wasn't all all, all right wing white racists. It wasn't about that. All of it, you know. Some of it was. Twenty six percent, I think, of Latinos and Asians voted for him, and so forth. So it's more complicated. But the the thing is, the parties and the politicians that are running in my little town here, they cannot speak to that issue. The, the issue that the hundred million people, that the millions of people that have abandoned political life and given up hope, and that's the biggest problem in, this, in, in the U.S., probably in, in the rest of the world too, is that people think there's no, there's no way out, there's nothing we can do, you know? Of course there is, there is things we can do, and we're seeing these developments, I'm very happy about the developments in England, around the unions and the strikes and so forth, despite the recent, uh, 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 the expulsion of Corbyn from the Labour Party and this twit that they've got there now. It's still on the on the streets and on the, in the ground among the working class there's great developments there and they will occur here except it'll be a little more violent here. There's no doubt in my mind about that. But this uh, it's quite nauseating to see all the all the, the liberals running around trying to find out who they should vote for. It really you can't blame people for not voting here. You can blame them for not being active in something, but you can't blame them for not voting. There's no one to vote for. Uh, that's just a couple of thoughts I had.